This is the first 8.1 video. We're going to look at the basics of a confidence interval. So to discuss the basics of a confidence interval, we're gonna look at two scenarios to start off and then we'll jump into the objectives. So let's look at this first example, a confidence interval for a population proportion. Miss Barbero loves the new Taylor Swift album, Evermore. And she's curious if the high school students in her district feel the same way about the album. She wants to know what proportion of high schoolers in her district believe Evermore is a good album. To estimate this unknown parameter, she took an SRS of 100 high school students from her district and asked them, do you think Taylor Swift's new album is a good album? 36 of the students in the sample answered yes. So the idea of a confidence interval is you use some statistic. In this case, we're going to use the 36 out of 100 students to estimate an unknown population parameter. So the population in this case is all the students in our district and the parameter is P, the proportion of students who think Taylor Swift's album was a good album. So this is what we know about the, about the scenario so far. We don't know the population parameter P, the proportion of students who think it's a good album, but we have a sample where 36 out of 100 or 36% P hat think it was a good album. So this is our best estimate for the population parameter, as long as the sampling method was good. So if they have a representative sample right now, all we know is it was an SRS. So as long as they had a good method, then that should tell us that this is an appropriate estimate. But we've learned from previous problems that our samples aren't going to be exactly right. There's going to be some margin of error. There's, it's it's going to fluctuate around the truth, but it's not going to be exactly equal to the truth. So that's where a confidence interval comes into play. We use our estimate here. We'll call it, we actually call it a point estimate of 0.36, but then we go a little bit higher and a little bit lower to try and capture the true proportion of the population, knowing that 0.36 probably isn't exactly accurate. This is a picture that might help summarize what I'm saying. Our, our proportion, our P hat, our point estimate was 0.36, but we know it's not gonna be exactly accurate. So we're gonna go up, let's just say for this case, we're gonna go up a distance of 0.04 more. So that would take us all the way up to 0.04, and then we're gonna go, or 0 0.40, and then we're gonna go the same distance below, which would take us down to 0.32. So our point estimate, is the actual value of p hat, 0.36. And then this distance here, the, the distance from the midpoint or the point estimate to the top of the interval and to the bottom of the interval, these are the same distance and they're called the margin of error. In this scenario, the margin of error would be 0 0.04 because it's the distance from the middle to the top of the interval and the middle to the bottom of the interval. So. Here is a distance of 0 0.04, and here is a distance of 0 0.04. So when we actually write out what our confidence interval is, we're going to say our confidence interval goes from 0.32 up to 0.4. We just list the lower and the upper of the interval. In future videos, I'm going to tell you how to calculate this distance. But as of now, all you need to know is the distance is called the margin of error. Soon I'll show you how to calculate what the actual, um, how to actually calculate the margin of error. Moving forward, you'll see confidence intervals written similar to this, where we have the point estimate or PE abbreviated 0.36 plus or minus the margin of error, which in this case was just made up 0 0.04. And so our confidence interval goes from 32% to 40%. So Ms. Barbero, if she were to have created this confidence interval, she would believe that somewhere between 32% to 40% of all the high schoolers at her school think Taylor Swift's new album was a good album. So this is an example of a categorical variable where we're using uh, P hat to estimate P because this is categorical. They think it's a good album. They fall into that category, category or they think it's not a good album. So they fall into that category. This is not quantitative. Whenever we're measuring proportions, we're talking about categorical variables. The next example we'll see is gonna be an example of quantitative confidence interval. 
So Miss Barbero realizes that the response, a good album, is vague and not helpful in determining how much the high schoolers enjoyed Taylor Swift's new album. Now she wants to estimate the average rating of the album from the high schoolers in her district. Using the same simple random sample, she asked the students to rate the album using a 10 point scale where one is the worst score and 10 points is the best. The average rating from the simple random sample was a score of four points. So now in this case, she wants to estimate mu where mu represents the average rating of this Taylor Swift album. So she doesn't know, um, and, and mu is representing the whole whole district of high schoolers. So her best estimate, as long as she has a representative sample, is the sample mean. You use a sample mean to estimate a population mean, just like in the previous problem, we use a sample proportion to estimate population proportion. So they tell us that the average score from the sample was four points. So X bar is equal to four points. And as of now, that is the best estimate she has for the unknown population parameter. But since we've seen before and that there's this thing such as sampling variability, we wouldn't expect X bar to be exactly equal. So we, we create this interval, just like we did in the previous problem. We create an interval that helps us to have more confidence about um, the true unknown parameter. So now our point estimate is going to be four, which is the sample mean to try and capture the unknown population mean. As you can see here, our point estimate is going to be four from the sample mean. And let's just say the margin of error was two. So we'll start at the point estimate and we'll add two and go up to six and we'll subtract two and we'll go down to two. So our confidence interval is going to go from two to six. Our point estimate is the middle or the midpoint, which is four. And our margin of error is the distance from four to six, which is two. And you can see the midpoint to the lower is also a distance of two. Our confidence interval will be written something like this, confidence interval from two to six, where our point estimate was four and the margin of error was two. So what this means is that Ms. Barbero, again, based on her sample, would believe that the district average rating of this album would be somewhere between and including two to six. So the whole, the whole purpose of a confidence interval is to try and capture an unknown parameter. And our point estimators, we've talked about point estimates. Our point estimate here was 0.36, our point estimate here was four. The point estimator is the statistic. So in this case, the estimator was X bar. In this case, the estimator was P hat. So our point estimators are whatever statistic we use to try and estimate the unknown population parameter. So for example, P hat is used to estimate a population parameter P. X bar is used to estimate an unknown population parameter mu. S is used to estimate sigma. We've talked about this before. This stands for sample standard deviation is used to estimate a population standard deviation. So these are the three most common estimators that we use. Um, we're really only going to use p hat and x bar most. And um, the next section is about confidence intervals using p hat. And the following section is confidence intervals of x bar, just like sampling distributions in the previous chapter. So the basic formula for a confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Again, you do not know how to calculate the margin of error. I'm going to tell you how to calculate the margin, error, margin of error in future videos. Right now, I want to tell you just what the margin, and margin of error is composed of. The margin of error is it's made up of two things. It's made up of what's called a critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. OK, so we're just breaking down the basics of a confidence interval. The point estimate we've talked about it was, it's either gonna be a P hat or an X bar or a sample standard deviation. And these are actually called estimators. When we calculate the value, it's called a, a point estimate, the actual value of the statistic. You might actually also see this written out as statistic instead of point estimate. 
So we take our statistic, we add or subtract the margin of error, which is made up of the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. So the critical value, all you need to know about it right now is it's strictly based off of the level of confidence. So the level of confidence, uh, we'll talk about later. The most common levels of confidence would be 90%, 95%, or 99%. And that basically dictate, dictates how far out you stretch. The other component of the margin of error is called the standard deviation of the statistic. This is actually um, the standard deviation of, well, it's similar to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution that we've talked about previously. But as of now, you do not need to know uh, how to calculate it. I will talk about that in the future sections. What you need to know about this right now is that the sample size, uh, the sample size changes the standard deviation of the, statistics, of the statistic. If you have a larger sample size, you have a smaller standard deviation. If you have a smaller sample size, you have a larger standard deviation. So just know that your sample size influences this part of the margin of error. Here are a couple key terms from this section that we're going to use. The point estimator, those were uh, these values here. The margin of error is the distance from the point estimate to the upper part of the interval and from the middle point to the lower part of the interval. The critical value, it's a multiplier. Just know that it, it's dictated by what level of confidence you have. More on that later. And then the standard deviation of the statistic, we'll talk about those in the next two sections. So really what you just need to know is the basics, uh, the formula for a confidence interval.